Hey everyone, Nick here. GMO versus organic is the ultimate food fight, but maybe it doesn't have to be. Today's video is brought to you by No Ideas Media, creating pragmatic conversations about divisive topics because rhetorical nonsense is just exhausting. Visit No Ideas Media on YouTube or Facebook or check out nogmo.ca for a less heated look at genetically engineered food. Now I think by now we're all really familiar with the organic GMO debate or argument or full out flame war, whatever you wanna call it. As consumers of food, we experience the fallout of this debate every time we go to the grocery store. Are these two ideas about how to produce food really opposites? Well, a lot of consumers would say, heck yes, they're opposites, are you dumb or something? But scientists don't really see it that way. According to Kevin Folta, professor and chairman of the Horticultural Sciences Department at the University of Florida, this whole debate might be resting on some pretty shaky assumptions. Oh, I, I can't stand the organic versus GMO debate because to me, there are two ways that you produce a product. And there are two ways that are very important to produce a product and two ways that are very good, that each have strengths and limitations. And I think are horribly complementary. I'd love to see both used in the same context. Wait a second using genetically engineered seeds and organic production methods in the same context? That's, that's possible? Yeah, it is. Not only is it possible, but it might be a best of both worlds situation. I think that uh, organic is a production technique which seeks to minimize the inputs uh, on the farm and transgenic allows you to decrease the inputs on the farm. So these two things are a perfect marriage. Here's where this whole debate falls apart. Organic is the way you grow something, but GE is the thing you are growing. What you grow and how you grow it are, are two totally different things. There's positively nothing stopping a person from growing a GE seed using organic practices. Example, how about cotton? If you grow cotton, you might have a problem with bullworms or lepidopterin larva, lep, lepidop, lepidopterin larva. Those little jerks cause major crop losses, but Farmers have a trick up their sleeves. It's a pesticide called BT. BT is an all natural pesticide, meaning even an organic farmer can use it. Trouble is, you have to apply a lot of it. Again, this is all natural stuff, so it fits right into organic practices, but still all those applications you have to do. They're either gonna take huge manpower and time or the burning of diesel to spray this stuff enough to get ahead of these problem bugs. Less chemical application, even if it's a natural chemical, would still be more organic though. And then we have BT cotton. This cotton has been designed to include the elements of BT that bullworms can't handle. The long and short of it is that BT cotton produces its own BT, so no need to spray BT at all. Now think about that for a second. Organic cotton needs this BT stuff sprayed on it frequently, but genetically engineered BT cotton doesn't need to be sprayed. So which kind of cotton is more organic anyways? And wouldn't an organic farmer want to spray their crop less if they could? Wouldn't BTGE cotton allow that? I'm seeing where Kevin is coming from, I think. I think it's mostly artificial because there are philosophies that are associated with both camps um, that tend to make a little bit of a division. And what we forget is that we really are all on the same team at the end of the day. That we're all striving to do things that can, uh, well do farming and allow us to produce food, but do so in a manner that's uh, great for farmers, that's uh, easy on the environment, that could have good implications with the needy in the developing world and also is great for the industrialized world consumer. And in that way, we're all on the same page. So it's a completely artificial split. So the split, the divide, the debate, it isn't based on any real world principles at all. It, it doesn't matter what kind of farmer you are, conventional, organic, permaculture, whatever. All farmers are after the same thing. They want to grow the most food they can in a way that is most sustainable. There are many, many philosophies on how to accomplish that task, as Kevin mentioned. The trouble as I see it is that those philosophies have led to different positions being taken. In principle, there's no reason why BT cotton couldn't be grown organically, except people writing the regulations for the organic industry have taken a position against GMOs, even if in practice, they'd be helpful. So what's the motivation to ban genetically engineered seeds from organic production? 
It's hard to say exactly what the problem is when people uh, frame this as being a troubling technology, but I think the majority of it comes from the fact that it was spawned from uh, chemical corporations that maybe already had their fingerprints associated with what at least were publicly visible problems, whether it was uh, chemical events or other types of uh, newsworthy events throughout the last uh, century. And when that happens, a company can come out with a technology with a duck that makes golden bricks and people aren't going to be excited about that. Uh, so this was just an opportunity to further um, tarnish a technology with uh, what they claimed was reputation from the companies. Ah, okay. Now we're into familiar territory again. GE equals chemical companies, chemicals equal evil. Yeah, yeah, math, the math checks out. When you ask a person what it is about GMOs they actually don't like, it usually boils down to a bias against big. We don't like big companies. Monsanto scares the pants off of us because they make massive amounts of money selling GE seeds and profiting from food is bad, except Whole Foods, the organic grocery chain owned by Amazon, and Monsanto, the GE seed company owned by Bayer, both make equivalent revenue. And heck, if we go up the corporate ladder here, the company that owns Whole Foods kills the company that owns Monsanto in terms of revenue. GMO versus organic is one heck of a popular fight, largely because it's been billed as the big guy versus the little guy, David and Goliath. But that is far from an accurate breakdown of this fight. Now, if you found yourself in a position where you're against GMO for other reasons, I'm going to challenge you to watch a few of my other videos. There are so many facets to this GMO organic debate, way more than what I covered in this video, and I do my best to talk about as many of those as possible in other videos. I'm doing this by going straight to the source of the information, scientists, because as Kevin points out here, rather pragmatically, you don't have to be against GMOs to be in favor of organic production. And you don't need to hate organic production if you like GMOs. Not only is there room for both, if we got in the same room, maybe there wouldn't be a fight at all. And speaking of not fighting, today's video was brought to you by No Ideas Media, creating pragmatic conversations around divisive topics like GMO and organic. Visit No Ideas Media on YouTube or Facebook, or check out nogmo.ca for a less heated look at genetic engineering. And hey, if you're watching this video on Facebook, maybe consider doing me a favor and searching No Ideas Media on YouTube and subscribing to our channel. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel if you're picking up what I'm putting down in these videos. See you next time.